Hey guys, sometimes it's uh, nice to take a little break from those high security locks and uh, talk about something unusual, something different. And so uh, I think it's time for another one of our cool old locks uh, here, uh, chapters. And, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. I don't know how many of you have ever seen one of these. I, this is the only one I've ever seen. And the moment I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And I, I bought it from an old guy who said he worked for the railroad years and years ago. And this is the only one that he had. It's unusual. It, uh, if you look closely at the front, you can see Made in the USA, patented, and then July 25th, 1921. I'm not suggesting this is that old, but that's just, I think, the patent date. And then it has a logo I think we're all familiar with because it remains the same today, almost 100 years later, Corbin. Um, the guy told me these are used on railroad, were used on railroad switch boxes, and it would sit flat against the railroad switch box. And then it was kind of angled, as you see, so that the guy didn't have to fumble in the rain or in, you know, in the darkness trying to find it. If it was stuck out in the front here, he could more easily insert the key and, and get inside of it. Uh, this is the key, and you might notice it's uh, something unusual about it. Those of you who've worked with skeleton keys before, this one um, has been modified. And, uh, and we'll go into that more in just a moment, but this key does work perfectly. Uh, it opens the lock and it slides out like that and comes completely apart. Pretty reliable for, the, for its age. And then in order to get it you, uh, back, you push the, turn the key and just put the hasp back in and then you can lock it at whichever of these notches you choose, up tight or hang it. Uh, if you have a larger hasp, uh, you can make it larger. Now. Most skeleton keys, uh, as I showed you this one, if I can hold it with this finger so you can get a better shot, look like that, or look like this one. And you can see it's there's a lot of slots on here. And that's because in warded locks, that's their security, is that inside of there, every lock has different internal warding, and uh, the warding has to fit into the slots. Now the thing is, in order to actuate all of these locks, Many times you only need the very tip of it, just that piece right there. And so some of the uh, guys on the railroad realized that and they simply filed off all of the other warnings, leaving only the parts necessary to actuate. Now once he did that, he, didn't ha he no longer had to carry a whole ring of keys uh, to open all the switch boxes on his line. He only had to carry a single key that opened all of them because he, all of the actuators for this Corbin they only needed these two pieces. So, how do we get into it? Well, we could probably pick it. I don't really care to go into that. I'm not so good at it. And besides, there's faster and cheaper ways. And I think you guys know I'm all about fast. Uh, these are skeleton keys that are available from, well, a lot of different companies. South Ord, Peterson. There's, I think every lock, lock pickers, uh, UK, they're all over the place. And they're very, very cheap, and they can save you a lot of time and a lot of pain if you ever have to pick any skeleton lock, not just this one. And so, basically, these are the five keys that will open the largest num uh, percentage of all of them. And they come in literally two sizes. You have the, what I, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call this the small size. So you have a double actuator, and it's, I call it small because of the width here. And then you have the single actuator, small one and then the large actuator double and so forth. And if none of those four work, then you can always do it manually with the, uh, with the fifth key that they give you. If it's a single actuator, you can sometimes actually pick it using this one. Uh, ignore this key on the bottom. That's one I made. And that get, that, it's just to get into suitcases and bags. So which one does it look like? Well, if we compare what the Switchmaster had done so many years ago, it's a double actuator. And you can see it's larger than the small one, so it's kind of similar to that one. Well, I've been playing with this lock, and what I discovered is that uh, he, he made a mistake when he made this, uh, you know, 100 years ago or whatever. He didn't really need the double actuator. The single actuator will work on this lock, but we'll just stay with the double. And since that's what he made, it's a piece of history. I'm not going to try to change it. Now, they may not be exactly precise, so you, sometimes you have to just slide them in and you just kind of jiggle around and I'm going to put a little tension on this half so it will pop when I hit it and you jiggle around until you find the uh, the actuator and of course when I'm not doing this on video it happens instantly and if you can't find it then maybe you need to do uh, one actuator at a time because there's one actuator 
on the left and there's one on the right. So if you can't get it, you might actually have to kind of pick it. And so you can jump to the single actuator. And this works very reliably, at least for me, when I'm not on camera. And you find the right place, you give it a little turn, and bam, you're in. So apparently I was on the last actuator. Uh, I don't know if it was left or right. And if you look down inside of there, you can actually see them. One on each side, little paws sticking out of those holes. And when we, re we turn this, it just retracts them and it allows the hasp to fall out. Anyway, there's a little piece of history. I, I really hope you get to see one of these. These are clearly fall into the cool lock category. So um, anyway, everybody be safe and uh, stay legal. Thanks for your time.